time for Dart Talk. Brought to you by thedartzone.com. Stay in the zone. Thedartzone.com is an official Cosmo distributor and Windy City Fabricators, America's premier fabricators of orthotics and prosthetics. And Redwood Darts, America's newest tungsten darts. Stand straight and tall and hit them all. Redwood Darts. And now, here are your hosts, Mystery Mark and Steve P. Alrighty, welcome to Dirt Talk. Welcome. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm hanging in there. Uh, running in just a tad late today, a little December eleventh. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Two thousand and twelve episode, I believe, forty seven for the year. Okay. Steve Ponsielman with Mystery Mark, brought to you by the Dart Zone. Stay in the zone. The DartZone.com is an official Cosmo distributor. Also, thanks to Windy City Fabricators and uh, Redwood Darts. Yes. How was your weekend? It was all right. Bear stink. Uh, other than that, not, not Boy, much. You really, you're really killing me. First, yeah. you talk about league last week. Well, and I was going to ask you. Yeah. Game. I mean, well, I I stayed around for about two matches at league. Plus, there was the nickel match going on, and I watched about <sighs> I don't know 45 minutes of darts, and I couldn't take it anymore. It wow, was, it was not good. No, the but uh, I still thought you guys would win. Yeah, well, we kind of blew it at the end. Nobody played really well, but it, it wasn't so much that it was. I mean, literally, when one of your teammates is on 81 and he throws his first dart at the bullseye, that's bad enough. <laughs> but then he defends it as if it's a good idea. And I just, you know, I'm shaking How, my head like, did this he, is Division what was his 1. his reasons? Oh, that did, he was guaranteed a shot at a double. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Okay. His if thinking what? was if he went fat bull, fat something else, he'd have a shot at a true double. And I'm like, well, trip the 19, you get two it, shots at a true double. Yeah. It, it just, I'm, I'm like, look, the, the math isn't really in your favor here, but okay, you've been playing like 25 years, and I've been playing 11. So, so hopefully he's just, he knows something I don't. But I, he's I'm, assuming he's not going to trip something, and if he goes fat 19, fat 19, or fat 19, fat 20, whatever, he's on 42. And it, 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 it was like that all night. Guys throwing stuff that I just literally couldn't understand for the life of me. And then, uh, yeah, well, it's like this hypermodern cricket thing. We got to talk about about end games, but I don't know if we're going to have time uh, today. We had a full show today. We have uh, we're going to preview both the World Championships. The soft tip uh, World Championship starts Saturday, but the uh, for the people that have to qualify for the final eighteen spots, there's a good about sixty guys, something like that. Okay, we're going to play round robin, top two in each group advance. And uh, there's 18 spots to fill out, and we have the rest of the brackets. We can go over that. Some interesting. And that uh, starts when? <clears throat> that's well, the round robins on Saturday, and then Sunday morning our time at one in the morning. I think they'll start streaming it live. So I'll be burning the. You'll be up for that, Sunday. right? Well, yeah. it, it's not. I can sleep through the bear game. I think <laughs> they're going to get absolutely just crushed by the yeah, Packers. Yeah, I mean, who wants to? Worth, it's not even worth watching. <sighs> it. it uh, Honestly, if you don't have an offensive line last year and you didn't do anything to address it in the off season, what do you expect? I, you finally you, get a quarterback, and all you want to do is watch him run for his life. Right? I mean, please give me a break. And and well, and then the receivers can't catch a ball. And the nerve there's only one guy that can catch. After that, everybody drops it. But he's really good. Well, I know. You know, they just need to, but, like, throw to him. Which is yeah. all they do. Yeah. But well. then finally one guy's wide open where you actually have a shot of coming back and the guy just dis- can't catch it. It's just brutal. This is an example of, of bad management. Yeah. And what happens to good people under bad management. And the media is even worse in Chicago. They actually asked Cutler if he would give a hometown discount to stay with a team that's been trying to kill him right. for years. <laughs> right, I agree. He's on the first train out of town. It's, oh, yeah. The minute he sees two all-pro blockers, he's like, I'm there. Yeah. I'm there. I'll throw it to myself. I don't care. I'll do better than I'm doing in Chicago. It's brutal. 
Let's get off of football. So, you're going to watch the darts instead of the Bears game, which is understandable. Well, no, I'll watch, well, you'll I'll watch, watch the, darts, the darts. It'll be over, and then you'll fall asleep. Yeah, I'll sleep through the Packer game. Right. And I'll wake up if there's a miracle. Yeah. Like if, you know, Aaron Rodgers, like, breaks his leg or something. Although their backup is probably, you know. Better. Yeah. Just as good. God, it's depressing. You're just killing me. What the heck just happened? Did you not plug that thing in? I did. Okay. But it apparently unplugged itself. Really? Okay, well, that's sort of bad. Well, you're back up. You're all right. Um, Okay, so let's start with... um, The disclaimer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's run that. That'll give us a free 30 seconds for me to collect my thoughts. There you go. The views and opinions expressed by guests on Dart Talk do not necessarily reflect the thoughts or opinions of the hosts, our sponsors, any official Dart sanctioning organization, and post hoc ergo propter hoc, any and all spelunkers, debunkers, raconteurs, roustabouts, technocrats, hepcats, cat ladies, Lady Gaga, the Four Seasons, the Three Stooges, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, hipsters, kibitzers, hellions, the fickle finger of fate, or Tom Waits. Pretty much covers the gamut. Which is what we try and do here. Right, and then uh, I, I wanted to... Uh, just make one announcement. Uh, Brad Boylan sent this to me. Um, he's holding a, a tournament uh, Sunday, February 2nd, in, in honor, I believe, of, of his late father. Okay. So can you read that sure. description? So he's got a little thingy here, and you guys, if you need information, it's going to be in London, Ontario, at uh, the Victory Legion Hall. So uh, we'll give you some details here, and you can uh, get a hold of Brad Boylan or email the show, and, and I'll forward it to him. The inaugural Terry Boylan Memorial Dart Tournament is one event for me- women and men, dress code in effect, dress pants, colored shirt, and closed-toed shoes. Finals may be recorded and presented to other entities. January 20th, 2013 will be the cutoff for the prepayment of spots. Uh, the inaugural Terry Boylan Memorial Dart Tournament shall be a 48-player 501 dart tournament where the first round is eight sections of six players and round robin format three out of five legs all remaining rounds and the final shall be uh knockout a best of 11 location victory legion number 317 311 oakland avenue london ontario canada date of event would be february 2nd 2013 a cold hard hard. 49 oh okay hundred dollars up for grabs as well as a hundred dollars donated by my friends jim baird for the high out First place pockets a thousand five hundred for second. Uh, here's two fifty for third. No, no, it's joint third because it's Canada. It'd oh, be top yes. Four if it was right. America. See, that always trips me up. Anyway, uh, I wish him luck with yeah, that. They pay looks all the way like down a, to. Yeah, yeah looks like forty eighth. Thirty third through forty eighth. There, you get at least something. Well, back. That's nice. It's nice. You got some sponsorship money. There was also, uh, they're starting to run qualifiers for the NWDS in Vegas. I was talking to uh, Ralph McCool today. He won the one they had in Tennessee. And yeah. Nothing like a good day of darts. Right. I'm telling you. The, these, you know, these one-day shoots, you know, I don't know what happened with, uh, you know, MLD. You know, they didn't have their end-of-the-year championship, but the concept of get everybody together on a Saturday, you know, okay, so it's 50 Do they bucks, usually have their end-of-the-year tra- championship? Well, it was the first... It was the first year, and it was supposed oh. to be in Nashville, and, you know, everything was said, everything was said, and I hadn't heard it was canceled, and then a couple of weeks before it got canceled, and I, I haven't talked to Brian, so I'm not sure what the deal was, but obviously they had some sort of issues. It, people don't realize how hard it is. You know, I mean, we're, we're constantly encouraging people to put on first-class tournaments and right. do it our way because our way is the best way, which was proven in Dayton. Yes. They pretty much did it my way, with the exception of a couple of things they didn't do my way, and those were unmitigated disasters. <laughs> so hopefully <laughs> which, in which Vegas they'll, they'll listen to me, yes, and, and it, will be, uh, it will just be a tremendous success, and then yeah. we can identify you know, who the best player is. I'm not sure that happened in Dayton. <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't get by Ray Carver. I, I don't know what happened. That seems what, to be a theme. I don't know what happened. I, they just <laughs> pinned me, Mom. I, I don't know. So anyway, um, what do you want to do? You want to talk soft tip or you want to do steel first? You Let's go do steel. Your, Why don't do we your do steel, steel, steel picks? first? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so Mystery Mark has made his picks for the, I uh, have. For the uh, World Championship, which starts uh, this weekend, and it runs all the way. The final is uh, January 1st. Okay. And then they take like three days off for Christmas. So the um, 
what I printed up here, or what, what I'm displaying here, is starting the round of 32. So these starting are starting on Sunday. Yeah, so these are your top 16 picks. So let's you got uh, Andy Hamilton, which means that uh, he's going to beat. Oh, I see. Okay, so Andy Hamilton's going to get by Richie Burnett, and John Part is going to get by Terry Jenkins. You're liking John. I am liking John. Is that is that wrong? You disagree? That's why they play the matches. Yeah. I mean, um, I don't know. You know, Terry's extremely tough, but he never seems to play good in the world championship. You know, I mean, he always seems to kind of like some of these guys. I think it's like Daytona. You know how they have Daytona yeah. at the beginning of the year and said this is like the whole year. And it's like Van Barneveld said once. It's like if you mess this tournament up, your whole year your whole year is screwed up, right? So a lot of these guys, lot even like in the early right. rounds, when the yeah, in the early rounds when the formats are shorter, these guys tend to press. And the trick is to figure out who won't press. Terry and John. Uh, I don't know. John looked sick last year. I think he had like stomach virus or oh, something. Okay. I mean, he looked like way pale. And stuff. So I don't think he was well last year, and uh, I don't know that. I that's a match that <clears throat> I'd pay good money to see John and Terry play. So you got got John getting through that one. Uh, gee, you took Phil Taylor. Hard well, yeah, you know. <clears throat> and it's Would funny. You expect you know, me not to? Well, no. I mean, I, I could see you doing that, but there's a interesting matches below him to see who plays Taylor. Is you got. Basically, Nicholson and Co Stompy, which is like a really good contrast in styles because, you know, Co is pretty relaxed, very composed, you know, very experienced. You know, he's an older right. older guy. He looks like a librarian, you know. <laughs> well, no, he wears like the, you know, J.C. Penny shirt and everything. And then you got, you know, Nicholson, who's, I don't even know what to call him. I, I just, I, I, I don't know what to make of that guy. But he's a great player. But him and Co. Stompy, and then you've got Robert Thornton waiting for him, who's having probably the best year of his career. And he's gotten by Taylor, and he's gotten by Nicholson, and he knows Co. Those two guys are a frickin' frack. Are they? Him and Co. So that, to me, is, is the most interesting quarter because all those matches are going to be good. Magnus Karras... Has, has been around forever. He's like, I think he's Swedish or something. He's Scandinavian. It makes sense. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he's, a, he's a good, solid player, but nobody puts him in the class of these other okay, guys. Right. But he, he, he strikes me as a guy that can get hot and really ruin your year, right? So he's going to play Robert Thornton, and then you've got Coe playing Nicholson. And whoever gets out of that quarter is going to have a chance against Taylor, I think. Yeah. I mean, Nicholson's beaten him. Coe's beaten him. Thornton's beaten him. I don't know that Magnus Karras has, but I don't see I don't see Magnus Karras getting through there. So I found that interesting. And that starts on the on the 23rd, Sunday the 23rd. And then uh, what do you got here? You, you got Whitlock. Thursday the 27th. Well, that's the next one. Right. I was reading from the 23rd. See, then they take their Christmas break, so you okay. get four days off. Yeah. So this is interesting. You got Whitlock getting through to play Chizzy. And this is one of those things where y- you got three guys that have to go from Hong What is that beeping? I was going to ask you the same thing. I don't, I don't know, know what know. that is. You have three guys coming from Hong Kong that are going to play Sunday. Yeah. In the uh in the World Championship and then hop on a plane from Hong Kong, fly to England, switch to play darts. on Thursday. Well, no, they're actually playing earlier because their play-in is actually one guy is playing Thursday, one's playing Wednesday, and one's playing Tuesday. So I think Lawrence, uh, Lawrence Illigan, Gunner, has to play Sunday and then Tuesday? <sighs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying to count the hours. Because there's a time change. Yeah. I don't think he's going to have 48 hours between wrapping up his soft tip flying. and playing in the World Championships right. in steel. So I know Darts Live has this uh, thing going with, uh, when I point there, <laughs> has this thing you going with. Uh, I wasn't sure what well, I pointed Well, they have this PDC thing going, Darts Live. Yeah. 
has a has a thing going with uh uh the PDC they're going to have to figure out a way to eliminate some of this overlap and i don't know how they're going to do it because they're going to have to move their tournament up of course and they're going to have to play it like at the beginning of december so it's over because they can't make it later because if they make it later now they're competing with the PDC audience right so i don't know what they're going to do there but <clears throat> paul lim Lawrence Illigan and uh, Darren Young all have to make the trip over. And <laughs> but do they really have to? I mean, do they really have to move it? It's up to those people if they really want to play in both events, because well, not everybody's playing in both events. Well, no, but now they have it where the winner gets into the World Championship. So I mean, there needs to be so, kind yeah. of some common sense here, and and it, uh, you know, fair play to the PDC by making sure these three guys are the last three play-ins, right? I mean, they, they have a structure where there's like, you know, four first-round matches and one preliminary the first week of the tournament. And then these guys that are in the preliminaries, Paul Lim's in one, Lawrence Illigan's in one, are all playing as late as they can, and, and so is Darren. So I, I hope Darren can handle it because Darren has a very good shot uh, we'll talk about the soft tip. Darren's got a good shot to win this soft tip yeah. thing, and I really, I really think he's got the ideal draw. He's got the best draw he's had at the World Championships that that I can remember, because he's playing Colin Lloyd in the first round. Now Colin's a, a you know great player. I think he's like the 13 seed or something, but that's when you want to get him. You want to get him early. Yeah. I thought we you talked know. about that a little bit last did we, week. Did yeah, we, uh, right. repeating ourselves. Jeez. No, that's all right. What a concept! All right, let's take uh, let's take our first break, and uh, it's going to be really, really a quick one. And we will be right back. You listen to Dart Talk with uh, Mark and Steve. One, two, three, four. Okay, we're back for the second quarter. Brought to you by the Dart Zone. Stay in the zone. The DartZone.com is an official Cosmo distributor. Also, thanks to Redwood Darts and Windy City Did you figure out what that beeping was? Yeah. It's like some Facebook thing. I left Facebook open oh, to read that thing. Messages. And it's, yeah, just notifications oh. of, you know. All right. Just maybe curious. somebody sent me. I, I think I need cross-cut saws for Farmville. So maybe somebody oh, finally sent me okay. one or you know, whatever. <laughs> it's what happens it's when you're know. waiting for uploads. You end up playing these time-suck Facebook games. It's the end of the world, let me tell you. Um, all right, so back to the PDC. Uh, who else you got here? You got... Uh, Anderson and uh, Van Barneveld. Gary Anderson and Barney getting through. Yeah, I can't see. Well, Brendan Dolan. Brendan Dolan, if if things go bad for Barney, I don't know where he is mentally right now, but I've seen that guy go south, you know, faster Quickly. than one of those penguins yeah. that <laughs> huddle in the and shiver and, you know, put the eggs on their feet. Emperor penguins. Yeah, it's bad. I've seen Barney go south. And it, it's funny, too. Faster than an emperor penguin is what you're saying. Going south because yes. they yeah. beeline okay. for the iceberg or, you know, whatever island that melts. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Gary Anderson has had a rocky year. But, you know, I think back to Adrian Lewis last year, you know, defending champion. And, you know, all year the guy just seemed like he was sleepwalking. And then the world championships come and then boom, 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 Everything, boom, boom. Yeah, yeah the, the guy's just dialed in beyond belief. So, yeah, so that's uh, pretty much taking the chalk there. Jamie Cave and eh, Rodriguez. Yeah. Brendan Dolan. 
I'd, I'd watch out for him. That'd be a Sleeper. good match to watch. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's had the year of his life. You know, he's won majors for the first time. and uh, Well, not the first time, but second time. One outside of Ireland. And, uh, yeah. It'll, it'll, that would be... I would like to watch that. If it's Brendan Dolan and, and Van Barneveld, that's definitely one to watch. Oh, this is an upset. You've got Kim Hybrix over uh, Wes Newton. Well, you got to pick an upset every now and then. I don't know. I, I have a can't feeling be, can't that... can't be all chalk all the time. The tournament organizers are probably rooting for Hybrix just so his girlfriend will be on TV. Oh, Remember well, last year yes. Nicholson was complaining yeah. because right. when they show her on the big screen, I'll be everybody, ooh, 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 wow, a woman, you know. Yeah. <laughs> maybe they don't see him that often. She is pretty. Uh, and you've got Justin Pipe beating Andy Jenkins, Walshy, and Darren Webster. That is probably the worst bracket. That's the most loaded bracket I've seen. Justin Pipe is interesting. I I think he has the composure to actually win this thing. I really do. Yeah. If if he just plays his game and, and blocks out all the nonsense that's going to go on when he's playing so slow that everybody gets irritated because it throws off their rhythm, if he if he just ignores that and plays Sticks his game. Sticks to his game. Right. I, I think he's got a shot. It's a long format, and he seems to do, you know, every round is longer and longer, and they're playing sets instead of this, you know, just, you know, race to six and yeah. stuff. This should be interesting. Ugh, poor Paul Lim. I mean, the guy finally gets back in the world championship, and he's got, right off the bat, he's going to have to play Van Gerwen. He's not, probably the hottest player on the PDC Tour. I yeah, that's Paul a tough draw. Him. Well, I could see why you take Van Gerwen. I, I was wondering about that. I, I was because I was thinking that that you know he had a real shot at this. Van Gerwen's what, like twenty one? He's probably never heard of Paul M. Probably not, no. right? And yeah. if he underestimates him, and Paul actually plays, but now here's a guy that's been basically playing nothing but soft tip for over a decade, who has to fly from Hong yeah. Kong. I mean, that's a big ask. It's a lot to ask. That's a lot to ask. But, you know, if if they put, like, really long odds on Paul Lim, I mean, really long odds, it'd, be worth it'd a, definitely be worth, worth a coin, taking a flyer. Worth a coin or two. Do you know where the term taking a flyer comes from? I have no idea. Okay. Somebody asked me, and I made something up. I, <laughs> I mean, I know sense? what it means, but. Yeah. Okay, and you got Darren Young beating uh, Colin Lloyd. And Mark Webster, for that right. matter. Yeah. As a sentimental so. pick. I've uh, met Darren. Seen him play. I always thought Darren had the game to go really deep in this event. And I'm I'm waiting to see the Darren that plays me it, to it, show it, up yes. on stage <laughs> and play them. Right. That's what I want to see, win or lose. You know, that, that would be awesome. I would be that would give me chills to see that. Adrian Lewis. Well, Dennis Ovens. Yeah. Wow, Painter and Baxter and Priestley. That's that's old home week. Pardon Guys me? that have been playing. Well, Kevin Painter against the old winner home of, week. Well, because they've all been around for like twenty, thirty oh, years. Okay. So, <laughs> and you got Baxter coming out of that. Yeah. I don't think I don't think Dennis Priestley's been playing that much I this year. I think a year. lot of these are a lot of these are just you can flip a coin. Uh, well, I, I, mean, I, you know. I don't think Kevin Painter thinks it's a coin flip. I think I think Painter is going to be out out for blood. He's made the final. He made the final okay. a few years ago, and uh, it went down to a final leg against Taylor. And uh, I don't know. Kevin Painter is very tough. Oh, here's your upset. You've got Steve Beaton over James Wade. And Dean Wynn Stanley over Mervyn was, King. Curious what you would think about that. I don't know. I liked the way Beaton was playing the last time I saw him, up until the point where all of a sudden he couldn't hit anything. I mean, it literally, he was dialed in, everything was fine, and all of a sudden things started Boom. flying sideways. Right. He's won a world championship, but it was back when guys were averaging in the low 90s. That's not going to doesn't happen yeah, anymore. For, forget about it. It's totally not going to happen. So your top 16, let me scroll down here. You've got Hamilton against Part. You've got Taylor against Nicholson or Thornton. you got to pick one. Why would I? Okay. 
Oh, uh, I see, because you got Taylor beating either one of them. Oh, I see. Okay. I cheated. I went down a little farther. Okay. You got Whitlock against Chizzy, Gary Anderson against Barney, Kim Hubrex against Justin Pipe, Van Gerwen against Darren Young, Adrian Lewis against Ronnie Baxter, and Steve Beaton against Dean Wynn Stanley. Huh. Right. Interesting. And you got Part beating Hamilton. I like that. You got Taylor winning. I like that. You got. Okay, I wanted, so you got I wanted to take Darren Young over Van Gerwen. I just couldn't, couldn't do, do it. it. I just couldn't do it. Yeah, you, the Homer refle- reflex kicks in oh, at yeah. some point. You're like, well, I can't. I know, just, okay. but <clears throat> I was, I, I was wanting to write it down, and I just couldn't do it. Uh, Justin Pipe against Van Gerwen. Wow. See, that's the worst possible opponent for somebody like Van Gerwen to play, who plays so Pipe. rapidly. And then you got, right. you know... The human rain delay? Yeah, right. <laughs> That's going to be brutal. And then Adrian Lewis against Dean Win stanley I don't know much about Win stanley but I like the way he plays. I like his... He's got a very direct, simple way of, of delivering a dart, throws a proper dart, seems to have composure. He's been around, you know, a while. So this could be the year he really breaks through. Every year, it seems, somebody goes deep in this tournament and all of a sudden, you know, vaults up it, yeah. into the... You know, major player category. Last year, I thought it was going to be Wes Newton, and I think Wes Newton thought it was going to be Wes Newton because he really, you know, took it badly when when things didn't go right. And I'm I'm surprised that you don't have him because I was thinking this year he he learned his lesson, and this year he was going to be like one of the more dangerous guys in the field. And you got him getting knocked out pretty early. All right, so part against Taylor, Whitlock yeah, against that's... Barney. Pipe against Van Gerwen and Adrian Lewis against Dean Win Stanley. And then you got Taylor beating Part, Whitlock beating Barney, Pipe beating Van Gerwen. Upset. Kinda. Yeah. See, I I totally agree with that though. For the matchup thing. Yeah. And Adrian Lewis beating Dean Win Stanley. Well, yeah. How could he not? Taylor against Justin Pipe. You think Pipe's going to beat Adrian Lewis too? Well, it's not necessarily. What pipe th- are you smoking? Yeah. <laughs> it's not necessarily <laughs> a think. You know, sometimes you just go on a whim and you just, you know. Oh, right, so this would be Justin Justin Pipe's. This would be his tournament. stepping stone okay. to greater yeah. things to come. Taylor against Whitlock. I I think Taylor's got Whitlock's number. I think uh, Whitlock seems confident playing a- anybody but Taylor. You know, it just seems like he always figures Gets out a in way his to... head. I don't know about that. I mean, you know, Taylor's an awfully fantastic player. Right? Yeah. He's getting in your head, you know. A never-ending, you know, raining ton 40s on a guy for two hours, that's not getting in your head. That's beating you yeah, down right. like, you know, the red-headed stepchild right. or whatever. Okay, and then you got uh, Taylor winning. Yes. Justin Pipe can only go so far. I'll tell you, you know, if Taylor does win this... This may be his last one. You think? I think he's getting up there in age, and he's playing as well as he has in the last few years. It's just that guys have caught up. Yeah. You know, you've got Van Gerwen averaged like 110, 111 or something. That's crazy. Adrian Lewis has been averaging up there. Gary Anderson averaged a bunch of matches. In in last year's world championship, he averaged. Who do you got beating Gary Anderson? Oh, Barney. See, now, th- there's a match I would pay to see. Barney and Gary Bar- Anderson. Yeah. That'd be a good one. And Van Gerwen and Young would be a good match. See, if, if this actually works out, these are fantastic, fantastic matches, matches right. to watch. Oh, yeah. I totally like that. Justin So we'll, we'll, keep track, we'll keep track of my picks to see. Uh, Can you imagine what the PDC would be like if Justin Pipe actually won this tournament? In what sense? He would influence a generation of people to to, to, to go slow, their slow and yeah. it would kill the television, you know, because you're showing it live, right? Right. You cannot have somebody standing there doing nothing. It's not good. It's yeah. It's you know what I mean? Video. It's like like when the Yankees play, and they step out after every. Oh pitch sure, and yeah. They play with their gloves and they knock yeah. their spikes and they do whatever they do. They go like Nomar. Talk to the whole, like, gotta have a trip to the mound. I'm ready. Have a trip to the mound every other every other batter, and they're three and a half hour games as opposed to 
like yeah. two hours and ten minutes, right? Or, or, even or less. Forty. Greg right. Maddox is pitching. Yeah. Like here's another unhittable strike. Good luck with that. Right. Right. I don't know. All right, let's take our second break, and uh, we'll be right back. One, two, three, four. Okay, we are back for the second half. Yes, Brought to you by the Dart Zone. Stay in the zone. The DartZone.com is an official Cosmo distributor. Oh, Justin right. Pipe. Barry Hearn. Kick, kick it over that. Well, because I can imagine what would happen. It'd be a nightmare for the PDC. Right. Right? So they did stick him in an awfully tough group right off the bat. So, I mean, he's going to have to play... Uh, He's gonna have to play well. Well, sure. You know, to 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 make it that far. But you know, once he, once he gets going, once you get past Christmas and and the schedule picks up a little bit, that's the other thing about this thing I don't understand is like you look at a guy like Lawrence Illigan who's flying in from Singapore. Yeah. If he wins, he's gonna end up staying in England for like I don't know ten days or something until his next match. I mean... Oh, if he wins his first match, right. Yeah, yeah. because he's got to stay over the Christmas break. Darren yeah. did that once. He ended up staying like with Terry Jenkins, and then he ended up having to play the guy. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, hey, Terry, open this for me. Yeah. Right? <laughs> oh, wow, I cut my finger. You know, <laughs> paper cuts or something. Do something. Get rid of the guy. All right, so the Soft Tip World Championship is, is run a little differently. Um, there are, I believe, is it, how many was it? A dozen Americans? In the something field, close something to like that, that, yeah. But not all of them. At least, <clears throat> not all of them are guaranteed to play right. on Sunday. Like Tom Sawyer, uh, Larry Butler, and a bunch of other guys are going to have to play to in. play in. So they're right. going to play a round robin, and then the top two in each group get Move thrown on. in. Uh, right. There's 18 spots in the final 64. I thought you said there was a guaranteed eight Americans that'll end up in the final. What well, is that? Okay, well, let's see. You got Ray Carver's in for sure. Scotty Miller's in for sure. Whoops, I went the wrong way. Uh, let me make this a little bit bigger. Uh, Rich Espinoza, Scotty Kirchner, Darren, uh, Big Dog, Randy Van Duersen. They're all through to the top 64. So how many is that? Five. Six. Six? Yeah. And then I don't know what to. Like, Chris White lives in California. So, but he's playing as a Canadian. So, I mean, you know, Chris right. is in. I mean, is he an American? Is he not? I mean, uh, he's Canadian. But same with David Fadham. I think he's in too. And he's another one that, you know, sometimes it says he's on Team Canada, sometimes he's not. So I don't know quite how they worked out with uh, with the Canadians. So you don't know where Sawyer is going to be. And I think Sawyer's got a Sawyer. I think has a a good chance. Tell me what you think of this. Sawyer has a good chance because he plays 
just enough soft tip where he it won't seem strange, but he doesn't play enough soft tip where it's almost going to be like a beginner's luck thing. Like so, okay. He's just going to play his game. Yeah, and and there's probably which will be enough his, for him to get in the top two in his round. round if of, he hits, if he right. hits what he's aiming at, I mean, cricket's cricket, right? I mean, uh, you're saying he basically won't get in his own way. He'll just be out yeah, there throwing exactly. and just you know, yeah, exactly. It, it'll be enough to move on. And that's the thing that I wonder with about some of these guys because they don't seem to. Uh, I. Th- I don't know how some of these guys go from steel to soft tip okay, unless they've been doing it. All the way. Yeah, well, the facts <laughs> went off, and I'm just—I thought somebody was walking in the door, and I'm like, "Oh, that's going to be funny." Uh, <laughs> totally right, anyway. lost my total train of thought. Yeah. Anyway, I do—I I was looking at the bracket, and uh, I feel sorry for uh, Espy for uh, right. Rich Espinosa because he's got Paul Lim uh, first. Well, not first, well, second, but you know, you're you're looking at the seeds to see, you know kind of where you're at. So R- Rick Espinosa's got to play Shingo and Amata in the first round. And uh, that's going to be tough enough. But, you know, if you get through, now you're waiting the, the waiting two for seeds, Paul the Lim. defending champ, Paul Lim. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking you you probably would rather play him later. I'm, I'm just saying. Although I did talk to one guy, and I'm like, this is something that... How did they seed it? <clears throat> they seeded it based on the results of all the stages throughout okay. the year. So the gunner, uh, Lawrence Silligan from the Philippines, is the number one seed. Right. Because he's he's won, you know, whatever. You get points for winning, points for second, top four, and then you just total them up. But the, uh, what was I going to say? The, the, the one thing that I find odd about this, and I had to actually ask three people, we don't usually see our brackets when we play. And I asked them, you know, does it do anything to you when you know in advance who you're going to play? You know what I mean? Yeah, As opposed to sure. just, okay, here's the board call. You're playing so-and-so right. on board one. I think there's a way. You, it could be sometimes detrimental that you're looking ahead. I don't know. I mean, I tend to not look. Some people stare at the brackets right. and, and will look at the very beginning of the event to see what quarter they're in and where everybody's in. Like, And I think I've seen a couple of really top players at steel tournaments kind of staring at the board, you know, seeing where they're at, seeing who they have to play and everything. And I don't look at all i'm just like yeah whoever yeah because it shouldn't matter i mean you you only you have to beat the person in front of you well yeah doesn't matter who you could possibly play two rounds from now but the uh the only time where you really know is uh that virginia beach tournament where you kind of know in advance who you're going to play because the the seating's established and you know now that we're going to start with a you know some pro events that are seated you know going to have to get used to knowing who you're going to play in advance and i'm just wondering kind of what kind of mind tricks that may play on some people. I'm sure it will. I've had some people telling me there's mind tricks just playing long format where you're not diddling every leg, so you actually know if you're starting the next leg or not starting. And if you're not starting the next leg, you put pressure on yourself to win the leg you are starting. And all these... these okay. The, this... Well, yeah. You know, all this just like chatter else, in your though. head that right. is totally detrimental to actually sure. focusing and playing well. So, I don't know. I asked a couple of guys, and, and you know, one guy was kind of like, who cares? He's right. like, yeah, whoever. I don't I don't really care. I'm like, okay. Well, that's the right attitude to have. Seems like it. I would Seems think, like that if you're you going to pick an attitude off a tree, that's the one to, to right. have. Like, I don't care who I play. Doesn't now, matter. I did talk to Sawyer about this, and Sawyer's like, look, I'd rather play the good guys early. Okay. Which, to the life of me... I, can't for the life of me imagine why you'd want to play Phil Taylor in the first round as opposed to in the final. That I don't get. But he was adamant about it. He's like, no, 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 I'd rather play him first. And I'm like, okay. To each his own. Yeah. Well, that's because, you know, we're talking about, you know, whether we should even be seeding in the first place yeah. kind of thing. So uh, that's where that came up. He never said he wanted Phil Taylor in the first round. <laughs> he I just mean, said he'd rather play the better players first. I mean, you know, Tom's, you know, not crazy. Yeah. Uh, who would want Taylor? Suicidal. Person? Yeah. That's, that's insane. So anyway, <clears throat> you're looking at, at at some of these uh at some of these likely matchups. And again, you don't know where anybody's going to get plugged in. Right. So I have a feeling that some of these guys are going to be like, "Oh my gosh." 
And then, you know, some guys yeah, aren't so going to get through. Yeah, so somebody's got to play his way yeah. in in order to play Paul Lim in the first round. Yes. Is really... Right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Or, and, or Lawrence Hilligan, and that that's matter. And that's your reward. Yeah. But they, they kind of scattered the... Uh, the play-in games. It looks like they've scattered them, actually, just from 48 on. I don't know how they're going to determine who gets number 61 and who gets right. number 51 or whatever. But anyway, some of the interesting... Uh, matches that I kind of circled in my head as being like, now this is, if I was running it, based just based on what I see here, right? Because I don't know where they're plugging people in. In, uh, in block A, in the, in the first round, uh, Ray Carver is going to play Antonio Alcinas. Mm-hmm. Now, Alcinas has played on the PDC and is a fantastic steel player. Ray's played on the PDC and is a fantastic steel player. Soft tips big in uh, Spain, from what I can tell. Okay. That's where Radical's at. You know, they're partnered with Sheltie with these new boards and everything. And I'm kind of like, boy, that's going to be an interesting match to watch. And I've seen Alcinas play in these things, and the guy looked like, I don't want any part of this. Like, he doesn't enjoy soft tips. Oh, but really? Just his body language. And it may have been... He didn't enjoy the soft tip he was playing at the That's moment because he was yeah. actually getting kind of pounded <laughs> by somebody. That but, could change your body language. You know, for a first round match, I find that extremely compelling. Um, and then in the bottom half of of block A, you know, I I did talk to Ray a little bit, and I said, well, okay, who should we, you know, for for the people that don't go out to the Far East much, which would be me, yeah, and you, and me, and most and, of our listeners, right? Who you know, who should we look for that, you know, isn't really we, maybe a household yeah, name? Yeah, we wouldn't have heard of. And the first name he mentioned was uh, Jerry Suerto of the Philippines, who's in the bottom half of uh, the block A bracket and is playing a, a qualifier in the first round. And then uh, Dave Fadham from, well. From Canada. Lives in Arizona, but <laughs> whatever. Uh, he's in the bottom half of that bracket. So I find that kind of interesting. And then you got, you know, the TBAs in there, so who knows who that's going right. to be. And then, uh, huh. I don't think I'd want to be in Scotty Miller's shoes. So in Block C, Ronald Briolis is, is the four seed. Yeah. Is it Briolis or Brionis? I think it's Brionis. Which looks like Brionis. I was pretty impressed watching him play. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he seems to throw a very nice adult dart. He seems to have good composure. He's not like a 22-year-old. I mean, he's like... You know, kind of a little younger, or I'm sorry, a little older. And I just kind of like the way uh, he throws. And uh, he'll be looking at Scott Miller in the second round, assuming Scott gets by Kazuki Hagano. Hagano. Who I haven't seen play. Um, and that's that's a pretty rough top 32, Scott Miller right. and, and Ronald Briolis. I mean, Scotty made the final in Vegas, right? And I don't know. I don't think he's been to Hong Kong that many times. He's been one or once or twice. So that should be interesting. And the bottom half of that, I like Chris. Uh, I like Chris White's draw. Draw. Yeah, I think if you're going to pick a draw, Chris White's got to be happy. He's got Scott McKenzie sitting in the top half, so he might have to play him in the uh, in the second round. And then below him, uh, he's got Big Dog, who he's played many times. Right. And. Uh, the 12 seed, Hoshino. So I'm thinking Chris White's got to like it. Chris White's got to be licking his chops, <laughs> thinking, oh, my gosh, I can do this. Yeah. This is dream draw, right? Uh, of course, you don't know who the TBAs are. I mean, he could very well have, you know, somebody like Sawyer right. sitting in the second round if uh, Sawyer knocks off Scott McKenzie. And then, you know, some of these seeds, you know, I kind of know who – is seated like you look at Darren's got a low seat because he only played once. Some of these guys that are seated went to every single one, so you got to factor that in. Sure, so that would I'm, make sense. I'm not, I'm not respecting these seeds the way as I much. respect the PDC seeds. Okay, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, that's kind of interesting. People uh, might look at Darren Young as a 46 seed and just see the 46 seed and think, okay, he's Darren's only, pretty well known. Yeah, I think. Well, no, I know, right? Yeah, but no, no, that you're right. I mean, if if you're just looking at the chalk. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Paul Lim's got Espinoza plus whoever uh, early. And Scotty Kirchner. Uh, I wish I could have got Scott on the phone because Scotty's the perfect guy to play Paul Lim. 
Because really? he's played well. He's played them before. He's played them in in like you know medalist and stuff like mm-hmm. that, and he knows exactly what it takes to beat him. It's just a matter of whether he can execute it. So Scott's going to be very dangerous for Paul Lim to be playing, and that's a match I'd really want to see. In the in this whole block B, that's the one match that I'm kind of like, oh yeah, hoping that's that be it comes that's to that. Be a cracker. Right. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. And depending on you know uh, Shokat Sumi, I like watching him play. I think. Uh, I thought he, you know, had a, a pretty good chance of winning. And again, you know, we'll see. He's got a pretty good draw. I mean, we'll kind of see who gets plugged in there. That would be a good place to put, uh, like, Larry. Butler. Against Sho Katsumi? Yeah, Larry yeah. Butler, I would think. Or or get up at the top. You know, play okay. uh, play uh, Arabal, right, from the Philippines. If Larry gets uh, 58 or 55, he's got to be, like, doing the Ron Sano heel kick thing, <laughs> which he shouldn't do because he'll probably hurt himself. Yeah. But, um, and that Ron would Sano be, didn't have any feet. Well, he did when he was <laughs> doing it. Okay. Jeez, man, I got diabetes. <laughs> Give him a break. Plus, he's no longer with us. Yeah. If if I got to plug myself in, I'm pretty sure that's, that's, that's where you'd be where picking. I, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that looks is the least balanced of all the brackets I've seen so far. And then Block D, Royden Lamb is at the top half and then the bottom half, eh. Yuchi Aguchi, he's pretty good. Tom Tom Wong. Well I'm looking to see who Darren who Darren's got and, and I totally to be honest with you, I would I would put Darren above Royden Lamb. Oh really? Okay. If they if they're playing head to head in top I guess it would be top 16. Yeah. I, I would make Darren the favorite. Absolutely. I would make Darren like 4 to 1. Really? That 4 much? to 1 uh, yeah. 4 to 1 under Royden Lamb, yeah. Uh Royden's a great player too, but I think, you know, Darren's got more experience and I just hope Darren is sharp. Yeah. The one, the one thing I worry about Darren is that he's distracted because he's looking ahead to the PDC. Plus, you know, the stamina issue of traveling. Right. And these guys are, you know, some guys left today. They're not playing until Sunday. Well, you should have plenty of time to adjust. Yes. It's going back to England that is going to be like, I, I have a feeling they're going to be wearing sunglasses for like 36 right. hours because <laughs> they're not going to, well, there's no sun in England anyway. But um, So, yeah, that that's kind of interesting. So I I, I kind of like Darren's draw, right? He doesn't see he doesn't he doesn't really see he's got the fourteen seed in the second round and the three seed in the third round. I mean that's that's very doable. Yeah, that's not bad. And you knock off Royden, and the, the highest seeded player below you is a six. Yeah. I mean you gotta like you gotta like being in there. So that side B and D look like that's kind of where you want to be. So I, I got to think Paul Lim's liking where he's at, right? Yeah, you would think. You'd think. Yeah, that would make sense. And <clears throat> I don't know for Gunner to be in the same uh, quarter as Ray Antonio, Jerry Swerdo, uh, David Fadham's on the bottom half there. I think David Fadham's probably going to like his draw, unless you know we'll see who gets plugged in at fifty six there. But uh, right. I don't think Fadham's worried about uh, Yuta Miyamoto. I think he's played him before, so he should be smiling. That's tough. I would have to say that's the tough one now. Is is, uh, is block, block A. A? Block A looks loaded to me, and Block C, yeah, semi loaded. I think Scotty Miller got a bad draw. I don't think you want to play the four seed in the second round. I think you'd rather play him in the third round. So and that's unless you're just, Tom Sawyer. <clears throat> yeah, Sawyer doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> And I'll tell you something. If Sawyer draws 64 and plays Lawrence in the first round, we're going to play that tape about him saying, oh, yeah. I'm yeah, exactly. The there the you first go. Round. Right. And I'm going to I'm gonna like carry it around the dark tournaments <laughs> and play it out loud when so I see it. be careful him. what you wish for. Oh, he'll throw something at me, yeah. I'm sure. Something. All right, let's take our last break, and uh, we'll be right back.
Okay, we are back for the fourth quarter, brought to you by the Dart Zone. Stay in the zone. The DartZone.com is an official Cosmo distributor. i got to let that thing fade out. A little bit. It, it, this right. is awkward. We'll get used this, to it. This is just awkward doing it this way. Um, so we uh, we were going to... We were going to present the uh, most outstanding player this week was that what we were going to do but we have put it on the back burner for a week yeah uh before we do yeah yeah we need to like kind of mention that um i want to quote quick chris white who, who happens to be in the chat room tonight um we asked him you know if uh you know who he thought would win and, and his initial reaction was it's really tough and he's about the fourth person to tell me that with this format that they have yeah You've got a bunch of guys that ha- are, you know, have legitimate chances of winning, and it's kind of going to be a matter of, you know, who gets hot, who can keep it going, and who can keep it going through the long delay between top eight and top four, right? Which I, I, you know, think was like a couple of hours. You know, they set up the stage and everything, so everything grinds to a halt, and uh, they do interviews and all this other stuff, and I, and I think, you know. For players, I think it's great that they cover it because that's sort of what you would expect. You know, they're creating time for the media and everything, but at the at the same time, it's like you got to deal with all that. Now you got to play, yeah, and you got to get back to where you were. You know, well, executing well enough to get to as far as you have, and now it's almost like starting all over. Yeah. So I wonder, and the matches are so short; it's only five legs, right? So it, it's going to be interesting and. You know, I, I, I started writing the odds, and I just kind of threw up my hands, and I was like, I can't do odds on this. I can do odds. I can post them after they do the round robin on Saturday, and we actually yeah, see where have everybody to know, is. Right. But I can't. How can you put odds on Lawrence Illigan when you don't know who he's going to exactly. play? you can't. And you have all these great players that Flying he could potentially for those spots, come right. up against. Exactly. Like, you know, what are the odds if he's playing, you know, the worst guy versus one of the best guys? I mean, you can't do it, so... I gave up, but we. I'll, I I can post them, you know, before Sunday if I get the uh, if I get if them. I'll get throw the them up on the Facebook page yeah. and everything. But it's uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Th- th- this is what kills me. I mean, I don't mind covering this, and you know, we can fob ourselves off as sports journalists and stuff like that. But I'm really jealous. I'm not going. Right. The more I the more I look at it, the more I'm like, oh man, you'd yeah, like sure. to be there. Yeah, because I know most of these guys. Yeah. Now, the PDC thing is a little easier to be a fan because, you know, you see them play all the time and they're so far away. And, yeah, you know, I've met this guy and I talked to this guy and I played, you know, this guy and that guy. But it's a little bit different when you see guys that you play regularly on the circuit, you know, going to some big money tournament and you're sitting it out. Yeah. That kind of kills you. So, yeah. So I'm jealous. That's okay. I do wish everybody well. Well, it's understandable for sure. I do wish everybody well and safe travels and everything. And since I can't win and I don't have a dog Somebody in this Somebody you should know might as well win it. I'm rooting for, uh, yeah, I'm rooting for the guys I know. Yeah, exactly. And I hope, uh, I hope that the top four is uh, all Americans right. or Canadians residing in uh, the United in, States. Yeah. <laughs> That'd work for me. Sure. I'd be happy with that. And... I hope that we see a high level of darts. That's the other thing that worries me about this tournament is that, and and I've said this, I don't know how many times on this show, the idea of the perfect tournament is to allow people to play their best so that you can see the best players playing at their best. Yes. And that's what all the tournament organizers, I keep telling them, this should be your focus, which never is. Right. Right. I mean, let's face it. But if it was, right, because they're streaming this and it's now like artifact, yeah. right? If right. you throw up all over yourself, it's on YouTube forever. Exactly. I mean, I've got 48 episodes of me throwing up all over right. myself, right? They're all over <laughs> YouTube. So I feel for you guys. So I, I am rooting for everybody, and I hope they do uh, I hope they do themselves proud. Yes, you know, I don't buy into this. Oh, you're representing your country. You're representing yourselves. It's nice to have an American flag on there, but come on, right? You know, it's not Team USA, but let's have an American win by all means. I'm all over that. I agree. Or a Canadian residing in America. I'll settle. We'll for stretch that. the br- st- stretch the boundaries for that. As one, long as we don't have to say joint third. Exactly. Right. So if Fatim and White end up in top four and and lose, 
do I have to say joint third? No. no. Right? Because, no. well, all right. We take that offline. Okay. Yeah, the outstanding, uh, we have identified the uh, outstanding players of the year, but I could not interview them in time for the show. Right. So we're going to so, put it off for a week. Well, yeah. I mean, I could announce it, but then, you know, it was nice that we had, you know, the finalists last right. week. Which was, you know, thanks everybody for the for the kind remarks and thanks to uh, Levi and and TJ and Tyler right. for participating. I thought it was a real good show. We got a lot of nice compliments on it, and it was mostly due to them, not us. Of course, um, which is fine. Yeah, and I would at least like to, you know, get a few of the of the finalists on before next week. Right. But I got kind of jammed up time wise. So, uh, and, and then you know, there's work schedules and people who don't have Skype. Well, it's not the first time we Facebook. It's so not the first time we've postponed that. something on the show. So, had to bring that up. Yes, too. Whose site are you on this week? <laughs> I swear, man. You just saying. God, it's like you're in the chat room or something. What kind of music is this? <laughs> so we'll 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 do that, and then we will save uh, Player of the Year until after the. Uh, after the new year, yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that last, the player of the year, and right. hopefully, uh, we'll get we'll get a long conversation. And if we could get twenty minutes with each of the winners, I think that'd be a good. You get player of the year for the men, player of the year for the women, and jack wagon of the year. Oh yes, so it might yes. be a long show. The jack wagon nominations you still, you keep still those, those rolling com- in. You still oh, got those yeah. coming. In. Yeah. yeah, keep those jack wagon uh, nominations rolling in. Those go to darttalk at gmail dot com. You can also uh, always find the show. Uh, just search dart dart talk on a uh, YouTube or tunein dot com or stitcher dot com or under the podcasts in iTunes or. What else? I don't know. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. Go on Facebook. Uh, if you if you're not a friend of mine on Facebook, if you just go on Facebook and search Dart Talk, two words, we got a page there. We got yeah. links to the show and everything. So we're pretty easy to find. The smart thing to do would be subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel, and then when the uh, when the videos get posted, they'll send you an email. We're also on Twitter at Dart Talk. I don't know if I'm going to tweet anything uh, for the uh, Soft Tip World Championships, but I might. It's pretty boring to be up at one in the morning on a Sunday. So tweeting? I, I might, well, I might have time to tweet. Right. I mean, my phone's so horrible. Although my internet service went out again over the weekend. These guys. That's, that's crazy. And, and For the whole like, weekend? Oh, and they, they, they come in and they're like, my router's broken. So I hook it up, router's working fine. I'm like, Joe, it wasn't even plugged in right. They didn't have the cords in the right spot. Really? And I'm like... Okay, so you don't know how to so work they, a router, they, and, and and the router's broken. Yeah. Really? That's that's your story, and you're going to stick to that? <laughs> well, that's why it was broke. I never thought I'd say this out loud, but I miss Comcast, man. This yeah. direct TV uh, internet is absolutely for the birds, man. It's horrible. Just absolutely horrendous. You got anything? I wouldn't know. Bust my chops on anything else? No, I don't think so. A lot of people were happy you weren't wearing a ponytail today. I would say that. I'm not exactly sure what what that makes a difference to people or not. But oh well, you know anybody bitching <laughs> about the hair should have uh, ponied should've up. Ponied and up I'd have to gone to uh, right. I'd have gone to Johnny K's thing, which yeah. uh, it seemed like it was a big success. Yeah, well, and that's there's good. a lot of these toys for tots things uh, rolling around and stuff, which I think you know great co- uh, great cause, especially around Christmas and stuff. Absolutely, so definitely. We maybe we'll work on something for next year. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> I I did have some news. I was going to announce some dates for uh, some of the uh, the the okay the PDC North American Pro Tour. Okay, has announced their dates. Yeah. Uh, well, they've announced months and locations and some dates. Okay. Uh, I I. We're not going to have time to get to them now, and hopefully we'll, they'll firm up by, by next by week. But they did add, uh, it looks pretty good. It looks like we're going to have, uh, there's going to be the, well, the NWD, NWDS right. is in Vegas the beginning of April. Right. But then there's going to be something in June, something in July, something in August, two events in September, and one in November. Wow. All right. And then I, I guess the November one's going to have, Three singles or two singles, so it's actually I got some information. They they upped the money for the Atlantic City tournament, so there's going to be more money available, and then they're going to add a. Uh, I think it's uh, singles, two men's doubles, and a blind draw Friday and Saturday, 
and then the big event on Sunday. So there's going to be more money to win in Atlantic City, which is good. And they added a another place in Canada, which I was told where it was, Kings, Kingston, Kingston, Ontario, which apparently is due north of Syracuse or something like that. So there's okay. going to be a yeah. uh, an event there, and they just locked it down today. So we'll have more information. You guys just keep listening to the show, and we'll keep you posted on all the, the pro tour stuff because um, <clears throat> that's going to be pretty cool. I don't, want to call, I don't want to call it a pro tour, though. We gotta. Uh, there's too many initials and names, and we gotta come up with something catchy. Okay, we'll, we'll work on like that. Like an Iron Man, like we'll call it Shield, right? <laughs> something like that. We gotta come up with something, you know, snazzy and right. catchy. Instead Outside of, of that, everybody's the doing bland good. pro tour. And of course, you know, you have to keep doing what we tell you on the show. That's you know, if you want to be successful, well, yes. right? Yeah. So hit lots of stuff in Hong Kong for sure, right? And uh, okay, got anything else? Let's just go. No, I think that's. I think uh, we about covered it for today. All right, we'll hang out in the chat room for a little while, you guys. Uh, if we missed anything, otherwise we're going to sign off. Thanks for listening, and we will uh, dart talk to you next week. Everybody, take Have a care. good evening.